Hey, it's Russ again, and I thought I would do a short video on how to find coolant leaks. Um, this is my daughter's X car. She just purchased a new one. Not a new one, but a newer one. And this is a 1991 Buick Century Custom with a 3.3 liter V6. And I've noticed spotting underneath the car. It's coolant, and I need to figure out where it's coming from, unless it's just real obvious. Um, uh, which in this case it's not. Um, a couple of things about cooling system real, real, real quickly. The systems are pressurized and there's a reason for that. Uh, you gain uh, degrees on top of the boiling point uh, inside of this system for every pound of pressure that you can hold. And usually on the radiator cap you can see how many pounds of pressure that the system is uh, designed to hold. In this case it says 16 pounds if this is an original style cap in any event, uh, this would gain quite a few degrees upon a normal boiling point. Uh, and that would be in addition to any chemical additives in the coolant, uh, anti-boil additives that is. So in any event, it's a pressurized system. You never want to open the radiator caps when a car is hot or running uh, uh, warm because they're pressurized. Uh, I made that mistake many, many years ago when I was young and it looked like the coolant was just being puked out of the radiator and it got all over me. So don't ever open the radiator cap when the systems are hot. Um, and for this test, it's best, obviously, for the system to be cold. You can do it when it's warm, but you don't want it to be pressurized. So uh, my recommendation is to do it when it's cold. Um, in order to run this test, I'm going to use a piece of equipment that we call a cooling system pressure tester. I happen to have one because I was a mechanic years ago. If you happen to be in a situation where you have many older cars running around, um, you may want to invest in one. Uh, I don't know how much they run these days. This one's probably 20 years old. It still works, so I use it. Um, a lot of the newer cars have different styles of reservoirs, expansion tanks, and all that other kind of stuff, which this one is, doesn't have adapters for it. All it does is it, I happen to have purchased an adapter for the import smaller style neck uh, to adapt to the larger uh, uh, domestic style uh, neck. Um, the way this thing works, pretty, pretty cool. It's just like a tire pressure or a tire pump. It's got a gauge here. Um, you can see the gauge. I'll give you a close up of the gauge. You, you, pump it, yeah, you pump it up essentially. You hook this end up. I know I'm off camera. Hook this end up uh, to the radiator neck. And then um, uh, you, press, you, you pump it up to however high your, your cap says. And then ideally it's going to hold pressure. If not, it will slowly uh, go down. And in that case, you'll either see uh, where it's leaking or you can hear a hiss sometimes. Um, so that's kind of how this thing works. And this one happens to be made by, by Stant, which is a, a pretty common manufacturer of... Uh, radiator caps and that kind of stuff. So let's hook this thing up and see what it does. Find out where the leak's coming from. Okay, the next step is to actually hook the gauge set up to the radiator. You treat this end like a radiator cap. It's got a couple of tangs just like the cap does. You put it into the radiator neck, uh, apply downward pressure, and spin it right on. All right, once you've got the gauge set hooked up to the radiator, you just pump it up to about the amount of pounds that the cap calls for. Otherwise, a good um, safe area would be about 13 to 14 pounds on this gauge set, be up here in the blue. So I'm gonna start pumping it up here, see what we get. Okay, we're gonna lay this down here. And we're going to keep an eye on it to see if we uh, if the needle goes down. Okay. While the gauge set is pumped up, always want to look under the car and see what we got going on here. Uh, looks like we got some leaks here. It's just uh, dripping away. So we'll see if we can find them by looking up top. After having it pressurized for some time, I noticed, uh, of course, the spot on the floor. But uh, up here on the drive belt area of the car, uh, it's wet behind this uh, center pulley, which happens to be driving the water pump right there. The bolts to the right 
bolt up the water pump. That's the pulley. See if I can zoom in here and show you. It's difficult in the lighting, but let me see if I can show you. It's very wet right there. Okay, I've placed a mirror. Um, so we could, there's the water pump, but the mirror is looking underneath it, and you can see it's dripping. There it goes. Under pressure. So the water pump needs to be changed. And that's looking directly underneath this water pump unit right here. So the cooling system pressure checker is, of course, a really nice tool to have. Not sure that any normal individual would, would want to invest in one. Uh, the ones they make these days, I'm sure, are much uh, more elaborate than this one. can work on expansion tanks and a bunch of other stuff. This is just an old basic one. It's probably 22 years old or so. Um, you can emulate pressurizing your cooling system by running it. It'll be hot, and of course you wouldn't want to open the cap when it's hot. Um, with this, you can also check this particular kit. You can check your cap. It has an adapter that goes on here, and then you put your cap on the adapter and pump it up, and you can see how much pressure it'll hold. So today's pressure systems, pressure checker systems, I'm sure are much nicer than this one. For the average Joe, though, I don't know that they would um, invest in one of these. Uh, but if you do have uh, more than two cars running around that are older, it might not be a bad idea. Okay. Anyway. I hope that uh, some of this information in the video was useful for you. Please work safely in your garages. Thanks.